Why did you decide to speak with us now? So there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions about what happened at the fire in Harlem in March of 2018. And up until now, I haven't been able to provide many answers to anybody. And it's important that people have the opportunity to know what happened that night. How would you compare this fire with other fires that you responded to? This was definitely one of the worst fires that I'd ever seen. Once we got on scene, it was incredibly chaotic. Uh, fire was blowing through the windows, out the roof. Made eight calls were going out to try to find firefighter Davidson. So it was incredibly chaotic. That combined with the fact that there was a movie being filmed there and there were upwards of 70 crew members on scene. What was that like for you as a fellow firefighter? Well, of course it was, you know, tremendously heartbreaking to see something like that happening but as the scene unfolds you don't really know what's going on you know for some time we were trying to take it all in and just size up the scene you worked by the motto truth from ashes do you think that we've learned the real truth behind what caused this fire no, absolutely not the motto of the bureau of fire investigation is truth from the ashes and i took that very seriously when i became a fire marshal and more so than ever when i was assigned this case because nothing is more important than finding out what happened to one of our own and in this case unfortunately uh, there's a lot of truth out there that's yet to be told. So when you're investigating this fire, what happened? Unfortunately, with this scene, it was uh, th the fire had burned for so long that a five-story building had essentially collapsed all the way into the cellar of the building where the boiler is located. However, on the second day of the investigation, I was able to gain access to that cellar. Myself, detectives from the NYPD Arson and Explosion Unit, agents from the ATF, we got underneath this building, crawled to the boiler. Now, there was complete destruction in this building, but one of the only things that survived this collapse in the cellar was, in fact, the boiler. It was protected by a cinder block uh, encasement. When we gained access to that room, I was surprised to find the boiler in very good condition. And in fact, there was no signs of excessive heat or fire in that boiler room. Uh, we have a picture of a pair of rubber gloves and a cellophane wrapper hanging at the ceiling level. And as we all know, heat rises. There was no sign of excessive heat in the boiler. Now, on the boiler theory, it's just that. It's a theory until we can test it. And where I was stopped short was at the testing phase. What do you think could have caused this fire? So that's what's interesting. So as a fire investigator, I developed my theories. Again, one of the theories developed was that possibly it was the boiler. Without testing the boiler, that theory could not be ruled out. Several days before the fire, the production crew had documented an instance where they had hit an outlet on the set. The outlet sparked and they had to replace it. In addition to that, they put in a thin laminate flooring and they used very long screws to drill it into the ground. We found examples of these screws penetrating all the way through the subflooring in close proximity to the electrical wiring from the building at ceiling level at the floor below. So we can hypothesize that perhaps one of those screws came in contact with the BX wiring in the building, which certainly could cause an arc and could get a fire to start. Again, without more testing, I can't put a cause in this fire. Were the sprinklers inside the building working at the time? We discovered that the FDNY had inspected the building two weeks prior to the fire while the film crew was creating the set and had documented that the sprinkler system was in fact turned on. So at the time of the fire, there was no sprinkler system, but there were, was two weeks before? That's correct. What does that say to you? What that says to me is that there's a lot more work that needs to be done in this investigation. At the end of the day, this is a firefighter who lost his life. Don't you think everyone would want to know the truth behind what caused it so it doesn't happen to anyone else? Well, that's, that's why I'm here today, really. Michael Davidson's family deserves to know what happened to their father and their husband. The FDNY members of the fire department deserve to know what happened to their brother firefighter. The people of New York deserve to know what happened to one of their firefighters. The fact that this investigation was cut short without getting to the truth is a complete travesty. What would you have to say to some fellow firefighters who say, hey, you first agreed that this was the boiler and now you're changing your story? <clears throat> so what people don't understand is I never agreed that it was the boiler. My theory was that the boiler could have started the fire. Yes, during that first meeting, I did reluctantly agree to go along with their boiler theory. However, as the lead investigator, I reserved the right to leave my signature off of that report until all the facts 
were in, which they weren't, which is why I did not write that report and why I did not submit that report. What do you have to say to some people who might say, hey, you didn't have enough experience and you should listen to your bosses? Well, what I would tell those people is the night that this fire came in, I was the senior fire marshal working in Citywide North that night. Uh, I was one of the senior fire marshals that works in that base period. Only three or four other marshals in my rank actually had more experience than me. Is it a problem that our senior fire marshals have only been investigating fires for three or four years? Yes, and I brought that concern up to my bosses. So you think your experience could be a concern department-wide? Absolutely.